So today in this video, I will explain you the internal implementation and working of Jetpack Compose. If you want to understand it from an article, so I have already written it. I will drop the link in the description. So make sure to check it out. So I will be explaining this internal implementation in a three level of difficulties and on first level you need to know the compose life cycle and if you are not already familiar with it so I have already created a video on it you can get the link from the description or it might be up here. So compose life cycle or how compose updates your UI so that will be done with this mutable state of. So just for an overview this will return as a compose state object and whatever composable is using the value of that state object will be updated once any value of this state is updated. Like on click of this button will change this current name which is the value of a state object and if suppose this text is using the value of the state object then this text will be recomposed means it will be updated. So you might have seen this famous diagram first the compose will enter this composition then then it will recompose zero or multiple times if any compose state is changing then it will recompose multiple times and then it will leave the composition if you are leaving the screen. So this is pretty common and uh, this is the first thing you should know if you are working with jetpack compose and on the second level I will explain you the phases of jetpack compose function how it actually takes your function and draws the UI on your screen. So the first step is composition and that determines what to show that means it will go through your composable function suppose this is column and then it will check all the children suppose text is the immediate children of this column and then button and then button also have a children which is again a text. So it will create a tree hierarchy for all these composable function which is actually a greeting composable function. So a complete tree hierarchy will be created which will be called as composition phase. And with this we have already defined what to show in our UI and the second phase is layout phase. So in this phase we will take the whole composition tree and we will arrange that in our screen like uh, first is our composable column that means the immediate children will be aligned vertically so we will arrange them accordingly whatever will be the behavior of that composable. So in layout phase we already defined where to show and align all the composable in their expected position. As you can also see here in this zip file and on the third phase we are defining images, text, color or anything that is the value of these composables. So combining these three phases we have shown our UI in the screen and here the main time consuming phase is composition phase where we are creating our tree by reading all the composable functions. So this thing is more time consuming and if we have to optimize our performance then we have to skip this composition phase if it is not required. Suppose only a text value is changed that does not mean we have to create our whole tree and we have to arrange our hierarchy again. So that is not the thing we have to only update the text in our UI. So that means we can skip this composition phase and we can only go through layout and draw phase. So that simply means you should not have to recompose just to relayout your screen. And one important thing to remember is all the modifiers that you are using with your composables are immutable. So if you are changing any value in your modifier so that will create a new modifier object and that will eventually trigger the recomposition of your composable function. So that means if you are passing any mutable values to your modifier so make sure to do it carefully because that will trigger your recomposition and it will affect your performance. So here's the official Android developers video you can check out to understand this modifiers thing in detail. So these were the phases of composable function and now let's deep dive into the internal working. So let's start from the basics. Composable is just a function right and what makes this different is just this at the rate composable annotation. Remember this compose is not an annotation processor but with this at the rate composable it will just differentiate this composable function from the normal ones. And if you have already heard about suspend function so you might have seen this suspend function my function. So this will be created a special kind of function that cannot be directly accessible from normal functions. And you might have also defined your functions with this approach or you might be passing them inside as a parameter. So that means this suspend is just a function modifier. Same thing is applied to our composable. So you can directly write this at the rate composable like you are writing suspend. And you can also pass them as a parameter. So compose functions are special kind of functions. But why we cannot access this suspend function or this composable function from our normal functions? Because in both the cases there will be a special calling context object that will be required to call these special kind of functions. I will be also explaining the internal working of suspend. So make sure to subscribe the channel and you will be notified for it. And today we are discussing about this composable. So what is this special calling context object that will be present in all the at the rate composable functions. So that context object is known as composer. 
let me explain you with an example. So suppose this is our composable function that you are writing in Kotlin. This is a normal counter object and uh, there is this remember function. Remember is also a Kotlin composable function then a custom button. So once the compiler is going through this composable function, it will generate something known as this composer object. And then this composer object will be passed to all the composable invocation inside that function. And it will also add some default calls like composer.start and this remember is also composable. So we are passing this composer here also. And then button is also composable. So we are passing this composer. And at the end, composer.end. So this is a simple composable function. I will go to tools kotlin and then show kotlin bytecode and if i click on decompile so it will ge generate some decompiled code and here you will see this composer so this composer will be present here multiple times because there are multiple composable invocations here one is passed to this invoke function and another is this then this so there will be multiple composer objects here you don't have to read all this code but the main motive of understanding this internal working is uh, you can get more familiar with Jetpack Compose and you can write more performant code and you can optimize your app performance. So we have added this thing during compilation, but what is going on under the hood? So there will be an array that is called as gap buffer. So in memory, this flat array will be present and once the composition is started, so it will start adding all the composable and all the states inside of that array. And if any value is changed, so we know that this is a flat array and we can directly access any object with using this index. So we will only go to that index, that index and directly update that value. And suppose with any state changed, we found that there are multiple composables that are present before other things. That means the structure of our composable is changed. So that means we have to move this gap above. So we will pick all the empty spaces and move this place to where it is required. And this is what we were calling the recomposition phase where it was consuming more time. So here we will add the new composables and this was not a good thing because we were moving all the empty gaps above. So it was taking more time when we were updating any value. So we were directly going to that index. So it will not take any time. It will be off one operation. But when we will be moving our whole gap to the any position. So that will be taking us more time and we can say O of n where n will be the size of this gap. So you can also read all these things present here in my article. And also this thing is the current implementation of Jetpack Compose and it might be improved in future. So here just to make sure to understand the basic. So now let's see all this array thing with this example. So the first invocation is composer.start and passing the ID as 1, 2, 3. So inside our array first thing will be group 1, 2, 3. And then the second composable is this remember. So it is also passing the composer object here. So that will be also inserted. So group 456. And also the value of this state object should be stored. So that will be also inserted inside of our array. So state object is here. As you can see, this is remember. And then our group of buttons. So it will be also inserted and group 789, which is having the current value as count and then the value of this count state. So that text value is here count zero so all these value will be also inserted inside of this array all the parameters of any composable and then we are having on press callback so that lambda function will be also inserted and this was our custom button composable so it will also have some internal implementation so that thing will be also added here and this whole thing will be our our button composer with group id as 789 and then at the end composer dot end so this whole was our counter as you can see here. So here how the compiler will know that the structure of our UI has changed. So suppose we are adding these three values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These three IDs inside of our array. And initially we are calling composer.start with ID as 1, 2, 3. But suppose with any condition our first UI object has changed. So if in any condition suppose we are using if else statement then the first UI will be changed and we will be calling composer.start with another ID, suppose 456. So our compiler will check, okay, previously the group ID was 1, 2, 3, but now we are calling it with 456. That means this thing is not matching. So our compiler will know the UI has changed and it will then trigger recomposition. So I also told in the previous video about recomposition, that means it will be using recursion to call that function again and uh, it will skip all the values that are not required to update. So this composer.end is the function that will cause recomposition and uh, it will be formed something like 
this. So composer dot end will also have some update scope function that will be working something like if you have worked with live data dot observe function. So it will pass the updated observable values and then it will be calling our counter function or the composable function again. So this is where the recomposition will work and this is called as recursion. The function calling itself but it is not infinite because this will be not triggered again and again this will be a conditional thing if any updated composer value or updated state value is there only then this counter function will be again called so i hope you got some clarity what is this composer object how it is generated and how it will be triggering our recomposition and using recursion if you want to understand this thing with more clarity i will recommend you to check out this article i'll drop the link in the description and if this video was helpful so make sure to like this video subscribe to this channel and thank you for watching